Welcome to Shankar's Daily News Analysis. Today's topic of discussion is these three articles. These three articles are taken from Live Mint, Indian Express and the Hindu newspaper respectively. So, the first article we are going to discuss about the green hydrogen and what are the initiatives taken by the Indian as well as the global level to increase the production of this green hydrogen. And in the next article, we are going to discuss about the Chief Justice of India, what are their powers, functions from the prelims perspective detailing. And in the third article, we are going to discuss about the trachoma infection as India has eliminated them successfully. So, without further delay, let us get into the today's discussion. Take a look at this editorial, trachoma eliminated as a public health problem in India. What next? This article is given in the science page of the Hindu newspaper. Public health achievements are usually unnoticed worldwide. But one thing you have to note here is that the public health achievements have a huge impact on the country's economy as well as society as they can improve the standard of living of the people by providing a better health condition. Similarly, India has eliminated an infection called as the trachoma infection and this is a huge win for India because it can reduce the economic loss of about 2.9 billion to 5.3 billion annually as the trachoma infection can lead to this losses because of the reduced productivity. So, the elimination of this trachoma infection is a huge win for India. So, with this we have to understand about the trachoma infections from the prelims perspective detailing. So, let us start the discussion. So, trachoma infection is a bacterial infection which is going to affect the eye of the patient. So, one thing you have to note here is that it is a bacterial infection and not a fungal or a viral infection. Usually, this aspect is twisted in the prelims question and next it is caused by a bacteria called as the chlamydia trachomatis. Usually, the children who are in the age group of 4 to 6 are highly vulnerable to the disease, but the disease progression is seen in the adult phase because it is a slow progressive disease. If the patient is left untreated, he can also become a blind because if you are going to leave it untreated, it can even lead to the irreversible blindness which is a major concern of this trachoma infection. So, now let us see what are the causes and symptoms of this disease. So, this disease can be spread with the help of secretions from the infected person, be it the secretion from eye, nose or throat. If you are going to have a contact with this secretion, it can cause the infection. Also, it is also spread through the coming in contact with the things of the infected person such as the towels, the handkerchiefs or even a handshake can lead to the spread of the infection. It can also spread it with the help of the flies. So, if the flies are going to have a contact with the infected person's secretion and going to have a contact with the other individual, it can lead to the spread of the disease. So, these are the three means of causes of this disease. So, now we will see what are the symptoms of this disease. So, the trachoma infection can lead to mild itching and the irritation in the eyes which can lead to the redness and pain in the eye. After that, it can lead to the discharge of pus as well as mucus from the eye. Added to that, it can also lead to the swelling of eyelid of the patient. So, if a person is infected with the trachoma infection, he can become photophobic. Photophobic is nothing but the increased sensitivity to the light. So, these are the symptoms of this disease who are infected with the trachoma infection. So, now we will see what are the factors which are making the individuals to become vulnerable to the trachoma infection. First is the crowded spaces living. So, if you are individual is going to live in a crowded space such as the slums, they may have a poor sanitary condition and have a access to poor clean drinking water, a not well managed CV system. So, these persons are vulnerable to the infection. Also, these crowded places are usually having an uncontrolled fly population which can also elevate the condition of the trachoma infection. And next, as already said, the children are more vulnerable to the infection who are in the age group of 4 to 6. Another interesting fact you can note here is that the women are more susceptible to this disease because the women are having a close contact with the children than the 
men. So, they are 2 to 6 times more likely to have the trachoma infection spread from the children. So, now we will see what is the mode of transmission of this disease. First is the coming in contact with the secretion of the infected person such as the secretion from the nose, throat or the eyes. This is the first mean of transmission. It can also be transmitted from the person to person contact or by the sexually transmitted infection. As already said, if a region is going to have an uncontrolled flies population, it can be also spread with the help of the flies in the habitat. So, these are the mode of transmission of the trachoma infection. So, now we will see what is the preventive as well as treatment to this disease. So, the disease or the trachoma infection can be prevented by having a regular hand wash and face wash. Along with it, we can manage the fly population in the environment to reduce the spread of this infection. By having a proper waste management system and a better sewage condition, by improving the access to the clean hygiene water, we can reduce the spread of this disease through these two means. Also, the WHO has adopted a strategy called as the SAFE strategy, which can be adopted to reduce the spread of this infection. So, the SAFE strategy was recommended by the WHO to prevent this infection. And lastly, to treat this disease, we can treat it with the antibiotics to attack the bacteria which is going to cause the trachoma infection. And one thing you have to note here is we do not have a vaccine to treat this trachoma infection which is a major concern regarding this infection. So, now we will see what are the initiatives which are taken by the India as well as the global level to prevent and treat this infection. First, in case of India, we have a program called as the National Trachoma Control Program. So, this program was initiated to control the trachoma infection. Eventually, this program is integrated with the another program called as the National Program for the Control of Blindness. As already said, this trachoma infection can lead to blindness or the risk of visual impairment if it is left untreated. So, this program was integrated with this NPCB. So, India was declared free from trachoma in the year 2017 and since then from the year 2019 to 24, various surveillance program has been conducted all over the districts of India. So, the World Health Organization has classified this trachoma infection as the neglected tropical disease and almost 150 million people are infected with this infection worldwide among which 9 million people are either at the risk of blindness or at the risk of visual impairment. And when India declared elimination of trachoma infection in the year 2017, the WHO mandated a survey called as the National Trachomatous Trichasis Survey to ensure that whether this infection is eradicated, eliminated completely in India. So, this survey was conducted especially in almost 200 endemic districts from the year 2021 to 2024 under the NPCB program to ensure that this disease is eliminated completely in India. So, this is the details we have to understand about the trachoma infections from the prelims perspective. We started with the basics that is what is trachoma infection, how it is caused, how, what are the symptoms, treatments and what are the initiatives taken by the Indian government as well as the global level particularly by the WHO. And with this knowledge in mind, let us see a prelims practice question. So, what does the SAFE strategy stand for in trachoma prevention? So, here are the options and the correct answer is B, surgery, surgery, antibiotic, face washing and environmental improvement. So, this is the acronym of the SAFE strategy, you can make a note of this. With this, we will conclude the discussion on this article and now let us move on to the next one. Take a look at this article. This article is taken from Live Mint newspaper. EU lender working with the PSUs to fund the Indian Green Hydrogen projects. So, let us see what is the context of this article first. So, the European Investment Bank has aimed to invest almost 1 billion euros in the Indian Green Hydrogen projects by collaborating with the public sector units in the India. So, one thing you have to note here is that it is not the first time. Since 1993, 
this European investment bank has invested in India in various strategic interests of the country such as the sustainable transport, climate action, the urban mobility, the electrification of the railway project. They have invested in many strategic interests of the Indian government. So, what we have to learn from this article is that we have to focus on the green hydrogen projects of India which is a major concern from the prelims perspective. Let us start from the basics and move on. So, let us start by understanding what is green hydrogen. So, this green hydrogen is produced by a process called as electrolysis which is nothing but we are going to use renewable energy such as the solar energy, wind energy to break the water into hydrogen and oxygen. Here you can notice that only hydrogen and oxygen is released and not the carbon dioxide. So, it is a green method also we are going to use only the renewable energy to break this water into hydrogen and oxygen. So, it is a green method. Another thing you have to note is that it is called as a decarbonizer because there is no emission of carbon dioxide into the environment while the production of hydrogen is there. Also, it can be utilized in many important industries such as the cement industry, chemical industry or in any heavy industry because it is going to reduce the emission of carbon dioxide to the environment. Also, it is used in the long term energy storage because the hydrogen can be stored as the fuel for the longer period. So, these are the basics you have to understand about the green hydrogen. Now, let us see what are the types of hydrogen. So, let us start with the green hydrogen again. We have understand about this. Here, there is no emission of carbon dioxide which is a good thing about this. Now, talking about the blue hydrogen, we are going to extract or produce the hydrogen from the natural gas by a process called as the steam reforming. So, with this steam reforming, we are going to produce the hydrogen. But in this process, there is going to be emission of carbon dioxide, but it is not released into the environment. It is stored under the earth by a system called as the carbon capture storage. So, it is a friendly, eco-friendly method. And the third type of hydrogen is the grey hydrogen. In this process also, we are going to produce the hydrogen from the natural gases only, but there is a emission of carbon dioxide which is going to be released into the environment. So, it is not an eco-friendly method. And lastly, we have a type of hydrogen called as the brown or black hydrogen. Here, the brown refers to the lignite which is a type of coal and the black refers to the hard coal which is also a type of coal. So, we are going to use this coal to break the water into hydrogen and oxygen. Also, we are going to release some carbon dioxide to the environment. So, this process is not an eco-friendly method. These are some basic types of hydrogen which you have to remember for the prelims examination. Now, let us see what are some main policy targets which are fixed by the government of India to achieve the green hydrogen production. First, let us talk about the National Hydrogen Energy Mission of the year 2021. The main aim of this mission is to develop the research and development in case of the hydrogen production and utilization. By developing the production of hydrogen, we can use it in the mainly in the fertilizer as well as the heavy industry. This is the main objective of this mission. And later in the 2023, we have a mission, National Green Hydrogen Mission. The main aim of this mission is to produce almost 5 million metric tons of green hydrogen annually by the year by the year 2030. This is the first aim of this mission in the year 2023. And next, they also have a focus to reduce the cost of hydrogen by almost $1 per kg. This is the another aim of this. And thirdly, we have an objective of developing almost 15 gigawatts of electrolyzer capacity in India. These are the three main aims of this mission you have to remember. Now, let us see what are the initiatives which are taken by the Indian government. First is the production linked initiative schemes. So, here the incentives are given to the electrolyzer manufacturing as well as renewable energy technology. This will promote the local production of the green energy in India. And second, we have a green energy green hydrogen policy. The objective of this policy is to provide a free grid access and a waiver of almost waiver for almost 25 years in the transmission charges. 
also a priority sector lending was given to this green energy projects and lastly we have a project called as the india hydrogen alliance the main focus of this alliance is to focus on the hydrogen hubs of india to increase the supply chain management which is a challenge in case of the green hydrogen production and utilization now let's see what are the global partnership with respect to this green hydrogen projects so india is going to collaborate as well as collaborating with many institutions such as the european investment bank the international solar alliances and countries such as japan germany and australia to improve its capacity also the reliance industry and the indian oil corporation and the adani group have announced regarding the investment in this green technology which is a good news so what are the challenges with respect to this green project first is the high cost of the electrolyzers which are required for the production of green technology we can improve the and advance the technologies and improve the efficiency and production of this green hydrogen and lastly as already said we have a lack of supply chain and storage system by improving the supply chain management with the above said policies we can achieve the goal of 5 million metric ton of green energy by the year 2030 so in this article discussion we saw what is green hydrogen what are the types of hydrogen what are the initiatives taken by india as well as the global level to improve the green hydrogen production and lastly we ended with the challenges in this sector now with this knowledge in mind let's see a prelims practice question with reference to green hydrogen consider the following statement so this question was asked in the year 2023 so the first statement is it can be used directly as a fuel for the internal combustion yes this statement is true and the second statement is it can be blended with the natural gas and used as a fuel for heat and the power generation and third we have a statement it can be used in the hydrogen fuel cell to run the vehicles so the correct answer for this question is all three above are correct so option c is the correct answer with this we'll conclude the discussion on this article and now let's move on to the next one take a look at this next article justice sanjeev kanna has been appointed as the next chief justice of india he will be the 51st chief justice of india next to the dy chandrachur who is the current chief justice of india so this appointment will be effective from the next month which is november 11 so this justice sanjeev kanna is well known for his key rulings in the uh, primary important cases such as the article 370 which deals with the special provisions to the jammu and kashmir he is also known for the interim bail case which is nothing but it is a legal provision where they will give a temporary release to the accused person in case of some conditions so he has been recommended as the 51st chief justice of india by the current chief justice of india who is the dy chandrachud so what we have to learn from the prelims perspective regarding this article we have to learn about the chief justice of india what are the powers functions how they are appointed what is their tenure what is the process of removal of from the prelims perspective detail let's start the discussion so let's see what is the eligibility of this chief justice of india so this is given in the article 124 class 3 first he has to be the judge of high court for about 5 years or he can be the advocate of high court for about 10 years also he has to be a eminent jurist based on the president's perspective so these are the eligibility which has to be satisfied by the chief justice of india to become a to acquire this post now let's see what is the selection process actually there is no clarified selection process which we are following now this is not the process which we are following now is not clearly mentioned in the constitution of india but this process is evolved through series of judgments such as the first judge case the second judge case and the third judge case so regarding these cases we have already discussed in the earlier videos which we will give in the description below also you have to understand that traditionally the senior most judges recommended as the chief justice of india by the current chief justice of india so the seniority is the first factor 
also the recommendation is also given by the collegium system so this collegium system is a group of people who consist of almost four judges from the supreme court who are led by the chief justice of india this is the collegium which is going to select or recommend the chief justice of india based on the recommendation of this collegium system the president will make the appointment of the chief justice of india so the powers of supreme court the powers as well as the functions of supreme court is given in the article 124 to 147 in this we are given with the functions of the chief justice of india the first function is they will allocate the cases and form the constitutional benches he will also form the constitutional benches to deal and discuss with the constitutional matters added to that he has a function to manage the judicial appointments and transfer with the help of the collegium system and lastly he has the function to oversee all the administration in case of courts as we already know india has a integrated and a independent judiciary so the chief justice of india will ensure that there is a independent judiciary in india so previously we saw what is the selection process and i said the chief justice of india is appointed by the president and this is given in the article 124 class 2 similarly the tenure the period for which the cga is serving is not fixed because it is totally dependent upon the way upon the age on which he was appointed so he will serve until when he reaches the age of 65 so that is why he is not going to have a fixed tenure and thirdly we have a important provision which is the removal of chief justice of india we have a independent judiciary so to ensure the independence of the judiciary we have a tedious process to conduct the removal of judges so let me explain the process of removal of chief justice of india step by step so that you can understand easily first we have a removal motion removal motion that is the removal motion has to be passed in the either house but this motion has to be signed by 100 members in case of lok sabha and 50 members in case of rajya sabha after this removal motion is passed it will be then going to the committee who will investigate the charges so this committee consists of the judges of the supreme court the chief judges of the high court and a distinguished distinguished jurist so he will or this committee will investigate and ensure that there is a proper ground also you have to note here that the proper ground for the removal of the chief justice of india is proved misbehavior or incapacity if this ground is ensured it will then pass to the parliament so another thing important thing you have to note here is there is a requirement of special majority for the removal of the supreme court chief justice of india so what is this special majority the special majority has to be in each house so it is nothing but there has to be a majority of the total membership as well as Two third of the majority of the present and voting in the house. This is the special majority. Let me repeat it again. It is the majority of the total membership and two third of the majority of the members present and voting. After this special majority is passed in the each house separately, it will then be passed to the president who will announce the removal of the judges. this is what you have to remember with respect to the removal of judges and this is given in the article 124 class 4 so we have completed the so we have completed the discussion with respect to the discussion of this article we started with the eligibility and what is the selection process we also discussed about the appointment tenure and the removal so this is are the basics you have to understand about the chief justice of india with this knowledge in mind let's see a prelims practice question The question is which of the following statement regarding the chief justice of India is or are correct the first statement is cga is appointed by the president based on the recommendation of the outgoing chief justice of india this statement is correct we have already said the current chief justice of india dy chandrachud has recommended the appointment of the upcoming chief justice of india who is the sanjeev kanna and second statement is the chief justice of india can serve until he a 
reaches the age of 65 years this statement is also correct and the third statement we have the process of removing the chief justice of india is mentioned in the article 124 clause 2 so this answer is incorrect because it is 124 clause 4 is the right answer so the correct answer for this question would be option a 1 and 2 only with this we will conclude the discussion on this article We have come to end of today's video. If you found the video, we have come to the end of today's video. If you found the video informative, do hit like, give your feedbacks as comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.